Hey there, I'm Jamie. I decided to join the Man Whore Podcast Patreon because I've listened for, you know, about two to three years and uh, I just have learned so much from all of the content that Billy uh, works really hard to put out for us and I had emailed him shortly after that and he answered and cared and read my novel of an email and didn't complain about how long it was so it was really nice and I think just that personal touch that he gives to us listeners by like actually communicating through email and and man con like that was amazing so I think just um, I felt that he deserved my pledge and I really wanted to give back for all that he does all of the education and advocacy and um, awareness that he puts out about important topics. One of the really good benefits is the champagne room. I like that um, about being a Patreon. There's some really funny stuff that's put up and then of course like the Sexual Achievement Sunday and some really sexy nice stories on there so that's cool. And uh, yeah, if you can relate to any of this, I would say definitely go pledge because there's some awesome benefits and he deserves it. Like he works hard and gives us all this free content. So I think he deserves to um, get something back for it. And I swear I'm not being paid to say this. <laughs> Welcome to the Man or Podcast. My thoughts and prayers go out to all the survivors of Hurricane Dorian, the Odessa shooting, and high blood pressure. That one will get you too. Okay, everyone. Hey, this is Billy Presida, and you are listening to the Man Whore Podcast. This week, we have got on the uh, Chief Strategy Officer at AshleyMadison.com, Paul Keeble, everybody. Almost 100% that you do not know Paul Keeble, but... There's a very good chance you are familiar with uh, at least knowing what Ashley Madison does. And, you know, we'll talk plenty more about my thoughts on the cheating stuff uh, in a little bit. But first, get them hot. Get them dates. Show dates. Yes, yes. Let's get right to it. We got a packed show this week. Show dates, people. Uh, Ithaca, New York, September 27th. I'm at Circus Culture. Uh, Romulus, New York, September 28th, uh, but in winery. Those shows are part of the Finger Lakes Comedy Festival. Uh, so you can go get more information uh, at their website. And then Mishawaka, Indiana, October 15th. I'm at Smokestack Brew House. So I'd love for you all to come on through for those. Uh, New York City. I'm going to have a booth at the Brooklyn Sex Expo, September 21st and 22nd. Uh, I'll be uh, saying hello, doing the selfies, selling some merch, and I'm also giving away a free motor bunny. Yes, that super expensive sex toy that I'm always hawking on here, the one that I just cannot recommend enough. I'm giving away a free one. So uh, go reserve your goodie bag uh, at sexexpo.com. Uh, I want to see you. There is free to attend. And they've got uh, all sorts of exhibitors. They got all the different sex toys. They got uh, sex coaches. They got they got a lot of stuff. And they got some cool seminars, too. If you remember Laura Delorado, I know you do because a lot of y'all loved her. I first became aware of Laura by watching her workshop on fat girl sex at the BK Sex Expo. So uh, come see me there, September 21st, 22nd. Come find me. Uh, now for your emails, I got a particular email question, uh, but I asked for some assistance on this one. This one kind of stumped me. I kind of kept arguing myself in all, di- all different directions. I couldn't give myself a consensus. So I held it on my friend, sex educator, Nikki Davis Fainbloom to tackle this advice question with me. Fan page for my fans. Oh, you fans. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, I have got on here uh, sex educator Nikki Davis Fainbloom. Look at you pronouncing it right. <sighs> so much work. Uh, <laughs> uh, we just finished recording an awesome bonus episode uh, that came out last week. So all of my $5 and up members on Patreon can go check that out. But I did ask her to help me out with a, a, an advice question. Because honestly, this is probably the first question I really did not even attempt to answer because I wasn't really sure. Like, I had a lot of feelings and a lot of thoughts, and a lot of them conflicted. Yeah. So I thought I'd bring in uh, somebody else. Um, 
piece of advice comes from C. He writes to me, hey, Billy, I'm turning to you for advice because being in the South, I have no sex positive friends I can discuss anything like this with. A couple months ago, I started seeing this amazing woman. We aren't exclusive yet, but we see each other multiple times a week and sleep over at each other's places on the weekends. The sex is amazing. She's fun, open-minded, and sexually adventurous. So then why am I writing to you? Well, I love being rimmed. Hey, who who doesn't? Who doesn't? Do you? Do you like being rimmed? Uh, I'm okay with it. <clears throat> You're okay, so that's a I'm not yeah, crazy that's about a, it. That's a, yeah. uh, you're, you, I like when the, you'll accept it. When the dude's really into it, I enjoy it. But, but that's because he's into it, yeah. not because you enjoy the sensation. Exactly. And people know I love getting my asshole licked. Uh, so <laughs> I'm not ashamed to admit it. I love having a woman eat my ass. It's one of my favorite sexual activities. However, here in the South, it's rare to find a woman willing to do it. So when she told me she likes doing it, I couldn't believe my luck. She eats my ass every time we have sex Wow, that's awesome. Bummer. I don't. Um, she, <laughs> I don't get that. Uh, she genuinely enjoys it. At least I thought so. Mm. Ooh, plot twist. Mm. I have begun to notice that when I seem to enjoy it too much, or on the few occasions where I've blown my load from her eating my ass and stroking my dick, she becomes a little distant and withdrawn afterwards. It's like she flickers through regret. At first, I thought it was me. Maybe I was too hairy. Uh, Maybe I wasn't clean enough. But after shaving and showering, (laughs) she would still seem distant afterwards. So I thought she didn't like doing it every uh, every time we had sex. So we went a couple weeks without it. And then when she did it, she still kind of withdrew. So to me, that indicates she doesn't enjoy it. But she insists she does. She Mm. insists. So I started being more observant. See, now we're talking about what we discussed on the bonus episode, enthusiastic consent and versus affirmative versus all the things. Mm. She usually only withdraws or becomes distant when I seem to get too much pleasure from the rimming. If she eats my ass, but I don't come or don't moan, her mood doesn't change. But if I start Mm. to moan or bust a nut, she changes. Is she afraid me liking it too much means I'm gay? Is she afraid it means I want to get into pegging? I just don't know. I've tried talking to her about it, but she either insists nothing is wrong or she changes the subject. I don't know what to do. I've always thought consent is sexy. If something, if someone doesn't like doing something, regardless of how much I enjoy it, then please don't do it. I just don't want my partners to feel obligated to do anything. Thank you, Billy. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, and 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 so what do what do you think on this? So the, the chick she'll eat his ass mm-hmm. every time, mm-hmm. seems into it, and but then. if he seems into it, she becomes not into it and gets withdrawn. I should say that like they do fool around if he does come and she gets withdrawn, they do fool around afterwards, but she like needs to kind of like get Have brought back in. I think it's really complicated, specifically because. It's interesting when people consent to something in the moment, but then feel regret afterwards. Mm -hmm. Because it seems to me that in the moment, she's enjoying it. She tells him she enjoys it. But then afterwards, she feels some type of shame or guilt, which I think may be probably related to her upbringing or maybe related to the really strange relationship that people think being heterosexual doesn't include ass play, which um, is kind of like something that people still believe in. Ooh, talking to the mic, yes. Uh so it seems like she's experiencing this shame afterwards, but she doesn't experience the shame if, if he doesn't come. Yeah, or if he's like not moaning. Right. Which then why do it? Because like if, you if he's not into it, then, then don't the why point? put your tongue on a butthole? It's the yeah, only reason really to, to do it feel is good. to feel good. I'd be concerned if you wanted to do it otherwise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Th- this this sounded to me a lot like when you find yourself down a porn rabbit hole mm-hmm. and then you finally come and you and you see what video is playing and you're, and you're like, like, this needs I, to go. How oh, did we get here? <laughs> oh, no. I yeah. didn't know I was kind of into this. <laughs> uh-huh. But it's interesting because it's not after she comes. Exactly. It's after he comes, which is sort of a twist. So there's not the chemical component because I think part of the when right. you're masturbating yeah. and that above the 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 whatever exactly. chemical it is is released yeah. Yeah, so you're not you're yeah. not high on the, that anymore, but yeah. she's not necessarily high on it cuz she's just eating some ass. Just eating some ass. So 
my I know he said that he's tried to communicate with her, but I feel like the only way to get to the bottom of this is to find a way to have a conversation with her about it mm. because it seems like there's something beyond the surface here that might be related to her childhood mm. or related to something that we couldn't possibly know without talking to her. Yeah. So I think what he should do is he should set up a scene. Don't talk about it while they're hooking up or after they hooked up or before. Like I think it should be when they're just like chilling at a kitchen table or something and he should just be like, look, it really turns me on when you eat my ass, but I really only want to do something that you really like. And I want you to not only like it during, but after. And I see that you disengage afterwards. So I think it's really, I don't like, it's not worth it for me if you disengage afterwards. What if he took out all the parts about how he likes it and simply made it about, Hey, does like, does this make you uncomfortable? Do you enjoy, Mm -hmm. like, does it, is it fun for you? Is it fun for you because I'm into it? This is what Mm -hmm. I've noticed. Right. But if he, because I feel like if you start with, I love doing this, there's yeah, almost like this like pressure, pressure of like, I love it too. Sure. Yeah. No, I can no. do it. No, don't worry. I'll, I'm totally fine. As opposed to just making right. it about like her. her. Yeah. yeah. I think that's really good. Yeah. Look, I got one right. Yeah. Look at you. <laughs> on point. Um, there's also, and I wish I could, we could get here more if like, if how much it has to do with him coming. Yeah. Like, is this it is re- like, if he moans, <clears throat> uh, and doesn't come does the same outcome because if it's just if it's about coming maybe she's just pissed be like yeah. i thought we were gonna fuck yeah and now, now i'm here humping my pillow and yeah. you're asleep like you came <laughs> from that we i wasn't planning on you coming from this i was planning on riding it right which can be very disappointing could and potentially I could be a understand factor. disengaging after that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um because also i think that if it's only about coming it's a pretty easy fix like you don't can come. just don't come <laughs> like think about your grandma like enjoy yeah. it but then we stop and then don't come and move yeah. on. Um, so I think they need to have a conversation about it. I think that's the only way to figure it but out. But if she's being evasive and trying to change the subject or be like, I really don't want to talk about this right now. But she's all she's been saying that. Mm-hmm. What would you suggest? Be- that seems to be the big thing where he says, hey, I'm trying to talk to her yeah. about it. But she won't. Yeah. So you can't force the topic. So... It's hard because I feel like for him, it would be hard for him to enjoy it knowing that she's going to disengage after. Mm. So I'd almost suggest like until they're able to talk about it, maybe putting it aside, which is sad. Yeah. Because it could be nice. But I feel like. How often do you find people who will to eat your ass every time? I get. What, I have what women percentage who, are you at? I mean, I have women who are willing to eat my ass, but not every time. Okay. It's like so, a special like, delicacy. Yeah. Situation. I'm also yeah. not always like, you know, physically in a good spot for that. Yeah, uh, no, you. But, <laughs> but the fact that you found a, a chick will, uh, willing to do it every time, like, yeah, that's a that's a gift, mm-hmm. that's a gem. But also, I don't know if we know for sure that she does genuinely love it mm. or not, because there are so many factors. It could be like a religion thing. Do you have other thing. questions you would want to know the answers to that would help formulate your advice, or is it kind of either way going to be? Just take assing off the table so she's willing to have an adult conversation. I'd have questions I'd want to ask her. Okay. Like because, what? Because for her, I just want to know like what it is about it she finds arousing. What about it she finds... If she find, finds it If arousing, she finds yeah. it arousing. If not, is it something that she likes to do for him? Because that's okay too. But then what is it that makes her feel disengaged? Because it seems like there's something that keeps happening, whether it's him coming or the moaning that she associates with being gay or associates with some... like. Could she be worried that like she doesn't want to go like kiss him right afterwards because like her mouth's gonna taste like ass? Could there Could, be a little bit huh, of like little... no, don't come around with me right now? It's like when I wake up in the morning next to a lover and like mm-hmm. she doesn't want to kiss me. You're like, brush your teeth. Well, it, it's like, is it my breath or yours? And she's like, no, mine. I'll be like, I don't fucking care. Yeah, that's uh, it. Could be something like that. Okay. Because also, I find when people disengage, it can be a whole number of things and like it's hard to really know mm. and for some people she might have just been like tired from all the ass eating and it looks like she's disengaging but she's just like having a little nap. ass eating gets you tired people. yeah <laughs> exercise it'll get you the the big confusion for me that makes that made me really not know what to say was yeah. the swap because uh-huh. if he, if she disengages when he's not moaning uh-huh. and she's into it when he does then that would make sense to me because she's like I'm doing this for you. Be, for you. Fucking enjoy it. Yeah. And if you're not into it, then why the fuck am I uh-huh. licking in a, a butthole right now? Yeah. But that's but that wasn't the case. Yeah. That's what really threw me off. And I wonder like how she feels when he moans normally. Maybe there's something about his moan that mm-hmm. turns her off in general. Yeah. Some people have strange moans. All right. Are there any other questions you would want to ask her? Mostly like I don't know. I'd almost be tempted to know more about her upbringing mm. and how like has she been educated about 
sex education. What does she think about homosexuals and how that's not at all related to the ass? Mm Because I think that's a big problem that people have is like they always associate the ass with being gay. So she might think that he might be gay by moaning from that, which is erroneous. But for her, it might make sense. So then if we were to give her some psychoeducation about that, she might be like, oh, it's cool that he moans. He's not gay. He just just Yeah, because he doesn't want to. I mean, I forget how he identifies. I think he might be bisexual. I'm not sure. But just because you like things on you're a guy who likes things on your butt doesn't mean you're into men it's you're yeah. only into men if, if when you have the men. things touching your butt are from men like exactly yeah i was hosting a speed dating event last week uh mm-hmm. last week and one of the women was like yeah like i you know i'll play like with his ass like with some fingers and toys but mm-hmm. i don't know if i want to peg him because that's pretty gay <laughs> which is so weird because she was like yeah. down for penetrating him but huh. not with a strap on oh, and then i'd be like you know but it's not gay because not. he doesn't he wants to look back and see point. a woman if right. you look back and saw a dude he might freak out yeah or maybe he likes both but or maybe he likes both but yeah yeah so um so now i'm thinking if he's bi maybe she has a problem with that Ooh, you know layers um, it could be yeah. something about especially in the that, south especially in the south yeah that's super so if she feels- and hey southerners if you're mad <clears throat> elect your national representatives who aren't so anti-queer and then we mm-hmm. won't automatically assume because you yeah. like how we automatically was like oh, it's like the, the southern South, thing obviously if they were from new england we wouldn't have thought that was no, a factor we, but you know why like... it's because we typically elect people who are pro lgbt so like right. nationally we have a reputation exactly of being pro that <laughs> yeah vote better if you don't want us to think you're all bigots uh anyways yeah. agreed <laughs> that's always thing. i always i always try to tell them like it's called a representative. They right. represent you. you. Yeah. So if Steve King hates <laughs> black, doesn't know why racism is such a big deal, you know what? Now we're going to think that, that, that district is like that because you fucking voted for him. Okay. Exactly. But the politics a lot aside, yeah. there's a lot of, it seems like there's a lot of factors yeah. at play. And, and now I'm thinking, would be the, the, yeah, but I'm thinking the bisexual thing could be it. If she feels anxiety about the fact that he's interested in both men and women and mm-hmm. non-binary, whatever, that could be complicated for her. So for her, she could associate the ass play with him being like, oh, yeah. I miss being with a man. Yeah. Or feeling like she can't give him all of that he wants. Right, right. But we would have to talk to her. Yeah. So, yeah, see, man, uh, you know, conversation with her. And if uh, and you're saying don't force the conversation. Yeah, don't uh, force it. And I would but say. But then take ass eating off the table until. Basically, don't do this super adult activity until she's willing to have a super adult conversation. Exactly. Okay. That's yeah. fair. That's fair. And mm-hmm. you do offer uh, sex, uh, sexuality coaching. I do, yes. Right? Do you do Skype sessions? I do do Skype sessions. Oh, look sessions. at that. Well, maybe yeah. see, you should be hitting up yeah, uh, Nikki maybe you here. Should hit up for, Homeboy. Yeah. Well, no, him. not me. You. You're the. Yeah. No, pro. I mean, oh. he should. Oh, yes. I would he love should, to yeah. Talk he should yeah. be maybe hitting you up and get, mm-hmm. having a session. And yeah. Maybe you, you help them out. So, yeah. um, Nikki, if C and his lady or anyone else wanted to check you on the interwebs maybe uh hire you for some sexuality coaching where can they find you yes um so i have a facebook page yep yeah you got that right i had to teach the difference between pages and groups yes (laughs) so i have a page um and it's called miss bloom sex educator Mm -hmm. uh you can follow me on instagram as well i post some sexuality related stuff it's at nikki davis f n-i-k-i-d-a-v-i-s f or you could also hit up Billy for my info. Yeah, fantastic. Go check her out. And if you enjoyed uh, hearing her right now, you can go uh, join the Patreon at the $5 level. You'll hear her bonus episode where we talked mm-hmm. all about teaching consent to the Utes. Yeah, uh, and also, Billy slayed it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. She gave me a little consent test. You can hear how I did on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 go find shabby. out. Uh, so you can get access to that and over 100 other bonus episodes at patreon.com slash podcast. That's patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash podcast. Uh, Nikki, thanks for coming by and chatting. and want you to say goodbye to everybody. Thank you so much. It was great chatting. Before I get to this week's guest, Paul Keeble from AshleyMadison.com. It's time for the fan whore appreciation moment. Okay. This is the part of the podcast where I have to give a shout out to some of the members of my fan whore community on Patreon. I want to give a big old thank you to Steph Sanchez. The whores at night will scream and fight deep in the heart of Texas. Thanks for repping the Lone Star State in the Champagne Room. Uh, Give a big thank you to Rod. Rod. 
Don't know much about Rod. Tried to look him up. Couldn't find him. But you know what? It sounds like a cool fucking name. Rod. Thank you very much. And I want to give another thank you to Hunter, who has uh, the second best lacrosse name behind Chet. Thanks for supporting the show, dude. Big thanks. And you too can become a member of our fan whore community for as little as $2 a month. Uh, at the $2 level, you get a personalized shout out here on the show. Unless you're Rod and I just really can't find you uh, on the internet. <laughs> I personalize as best I can. Uh, you also get access to behind the scenes Patreon posts. And most importantly, you get invited to our super secret Facebook group, The Champagne Room. And that is a great place for sex positive discussions that you're too shy to have with your friends and family. You get to join uh, well over 100 like-minded listeners in that group. Uh, We have all sorts of weekly threads. We got episode comment threads. We got sexual achievement Sunday. We got people posting all sorts of fun sex positive memes. It's a great place to be and a great place to connect uh, with fellow folks like yourselves. So become a member today. Go to patreon.com slash man whore podcast. That's patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash man whore podcast. And now for this week's guest, Paul Keeble of AshleyMadison.com. Uh, Paul is the chief strategy officer over Ashley Madison. He uh, he used to do more just the, the communications, uh, PR stuff before that. Look, I don't usually let corporate people come on to shill their wares. When I when I get like a, some sort of email asking for some CEO of whatever, or founder of whatever to come on the show, I'm like, you know what? Honestly, I'd, I'd rather you guys just pay to advertise on the podcast. However... AshleyMadison.com is a notorious online dating site. Their slogan is, life is short, have an affair. And I was really interested, and I I told them, I was like, look, I don't have the most favorable opinion of your website, so if he wants to come on, you know, he's, it's not going to be all puffy. And they were like, no, it's okay, bring it on. And I was really curious how someone was going to defend infidelity. I mean, I knew a few of the talking points he would probably throw out there, but I wanted to see how you know how he would stand to a little bit of uh, a little bit of pushback. Anyways, so Paul is uh, you know on here justifying what Ashley Madison as a website offers, and you know at the end of our conversation, you you can start formulating your own opinions. Maybe they changed, maybe they didn't. Slight technical issue uh, when I went to their office space uh, in Manhattan. There were two rooms that they offered uh, to have us record in. Both of them were not ideal for the audio. They both had echoes. Uh, so I chose the one that had less echo. So if you are like, oh, is that an echo? There is. It's not you. It's me. And now it's me with Paul Keeble, the chief strategy officer of AshleyMadison.com. To say, you know, I'm going to put limits on what questions somebody can ask me when I work at Ashley Madison is kind of crazy because, yeah, people want to know. You say you're in a 17-year monogamous relationship. Really? You work at Ashley Madison? I mean, to the best of your knowledge, you're in a monogamous relationship because that's well, fair point. kind of the whole base of the site is, you know, it's a lot of people who, you know, claim they're in monogamous relationships, but really they're in unethically non-monogamous relationships. Well, it could be, could be ethically, could be non-ethically. The, the key thing we tell our members is, look, if you want to, you know, have a successful affair, you come to us. And the starting point to a successful affair, kind of like Fight Club, is don't mm. talk about the affair. So, yeah, <laughs> if you get asked, you got to answer, no, of course I'm monogamous. So mm. it, it creates a dynamic about... Yeah, you know, am I telling the truth or am I not? So, you know, I always get the stink eye from, from my wife when I come home from work and, or come, you know, home from a media tour from another country. You know, I was in uh, Asia in the fall doing some work. She's like, you know, how was Tokyo? I'm like, that was great. And how fucking great was it, Paul? Exactly. How great was it? Did you have sushi or did you have, you know, or did you fuck somebody, Paul? So that becomes, <laughs> that becomes one of those really, really uh-huh. weird conversations you have. So she's not a fan. <laughs> Um, you know what? We, we've had multiple conversations. I'm actually a boomerang employee. I left the company in 2016 and mm-hmm. it came back again in 2017, which precipitated a whole secondary conversation. I was like, why are you going back? 
What do you like about that company? What do I, what don't that I know? That company, it lied and cheated to you. Why are you going back to it, man? Well, they never lied and cheated <laughs> no, no, to no, me. <laughs> going back to, to relationships like that. Um, it, I mean, that was the thing when I, I told some people that they were curious about. They wanted to know, well, what's his situation? And like, how's his wife feel about it? I guess the first time you say you're going to go work for Ashley Madison, like what's that? Response? So that was really interesting. I, you know, I spent 14 years in agency life, which is really mm-hmm. tough. You know, spending. 12 hours a day, easily most days working. You got tons of clients. And I was really, it, it was beneficial for me because my wife was in the industry as well. That's actually how we met. Mm. And so she understood why I wanted to leave agency life and this opportunity to work at a, you know, client side corporate job that was in Toronto, Canadian company that did business around the world was fascinating. And she got it. You know, she had reservations about the business of the business. But, you know, we had a lot of open conversations about it and she really come to understand why I value it. But here's the amazing part. And this is what people don't get about working at Ashley Madison. The side benefit is, sure, we're the world's largest married dating website. But we're also basically the world's largest marriage counseling service. Because if you don't want your spouse that's, to end up on Ashley Madison. That's a stretch. No, listen, because I will tell you why I mean, no, no, that, it's like That's a cute concept to come up with in the office. No, I do I do respect the, the craftiness to get there. <laughs> hey, if you don't want your, your girlfriend, your wife, your spouse on our site, I'll tell you why they come. And I'll tell you what you need to do to avoid it. So I can actually but help you, you. But that's not a disclaimer that comes up when you sign up. I would I would buy that if... Uh, if well, when that's why you I said si- side if benefit. You si- yeah, I was going to be like, if you sign up and then they give you like one or two windows pop up, I'd be like, are you sure? Have you tried X, Y, and Z? This is probably why you're cheating. Are you still want to do it? Click confirm. <laughs> right. So it's, it's more in the... <laughs> Which the- I feel like would win over a lot of people. All, a lot of your critics would be like... Hey, at least they're trying <laughs> to keep them together and this person just committed to it. <laughs> yeah, but see, there's the other part about it. What people also don't get is that infidelity actually probably helps save more marriages than it breaks up marriages. And you know what would probably save you even more is like open and honest communication about sure. wants and desires and when things just aren't working. Sure. Because not, ma- not all marriages should be saved. But let's be you honest. Mean. You know, I don't think the Pope's going to change his mind about adultery. Mm-hmm. It's kind of funny. The Ten Commandments, adultery is the only sin that's mentioned twice there. So uh-huh. they really, really don't want you to sign up for Ashley Madison. But they never really answer the question as to why. And so what we try to do is I'm not out here to try to convince anybody that having an affair is a good idea Mm. because no matter what I do, no matter how awesome I am about talking about it, you know, if you're happily married and getting everything you want and she's getting everything she wants within that marriage, you're never going to sign up. It's for those who are seeking something else. Uh, there's only so much, uh, I, I, we can, I'll say right now, we're, I'm, I'm sitting down right now with, with Paul Keeble. For, uh, am I saying that right? Keeble? You got it. Keeble, uh, the chief strategy officer at, uh, Ruby. Ruby. In, Ruby, which owns AshleyMadison.com, which we've all seen, uh, either an article about or many, many advertisements for. Or your profile. Or your profile. Yes, yes. Um, when you, so when you first got there, you left the agency life and you were already married and you realized you're going to go work with Ashley Madison. What was that? conversation with the wife like it was really interesting because a friend of ours reached out to me because she knew i was looking uh for a new job and she contacted me and said hey uh i know these folks over at ruby I, at that time we were actually called avid life media right. and <laughs> needed a bit of a rebound in 2015 yeah something happened <laughs> and she said they're looking for a pr person to sort of run the show do you would you be interested and i said "Ooh, that's interesting and i you know, i'd heard about him uh, so this would have been in 2013. So I'd okay. heard about him, but you know, there was, I don't think there was as great awareness as there is now. So I looked into him a little bit. Uh, I called around the CEO at the time was a friend of a lot of people I knew. So I talked to them about his, this Noel Bitterman. Bitterman? Yeah. yeah. So some people I knew knew Noel. So he and I went, got together. We had a meeting. Uh, I kind of liked the story. I, I liked the vibe of the company. I liked the vibe of the work. I really loved the, the, the atmosphere and what we got to do, you know, as a professional communicator, you know, as I try to pretend that I'm a real, what do you mean? You, but what do you mean? Like, I liked what we do because so, now you're talking about like the overall company atmosphere or like Ashley specifically, like, is it, man, I love that we're going to get to help people cheat. <laughs> and, no. and I, and I don't, and I should, I just want to preface before we move forward. It's like, I, Two weeks ago, was sleeping with someone who who's cheating on her husband. So I'm not like this like moral crusader when it comes to my pushback on cheating. And we can get more into that later. But I didn't I didn't want you to think like, oh, who's this fucking guy? Um, 
But is it, was it that you loved Ashley Madison's like message, or did was there something about Avid Life in general that had a? It was actually more specific to the, the field of work that I do. So okay. in PR communications, a lot of companies, you know, they go out there and they they tout their greatest new widget. They they built this new feature, this mm-hmm. new product, or the latest iteration in blue versus red, and it's crap. Who cares that your phone comes now in a blue case versus a red case? That's not interesting. That's not newsworthy. Mm-hmm. And what I found fascinating is we don't ever really talk about the product. We don't talk about the website or the app because who cares? That's not interesting. What's interesting is what's happening behind it. Why are people doing this? What are people doing? What is Mm. really happening in the world of infidelity? So that's always what we talk about. And that, from a professional standpoint, I said, they get it. They really understand the value of PR. And then when I got in, blew my mind. They can see the benefits of what we do in ways that nobody else really looks at in terms of, when people hear about us, it really changes opinions and changes mind. I can see movement. I'll tell you a great story. Our old CEO did an interview on a, on a TV station in South Africa. The next day, like 10,000 people signed up based on that one interview. And look, he wasn't that convincing. What it yeah. was, was this was an answer to a problem they've been working on for a really long time. And so, yeah, we're solving pro- people's problems. By helping them cheat. <laughs> By helping them have affairs. Uh-huh. Men and women. Um, you're the chief strategy officer. What is that? So I lo- saw you also attach a CFO title at some point or that would be pretty cool. I'll go talk to my boss about that. No, okay, I'm someone, not the CFO. Someone missed it. Okay. I'm just the CSO. Uh, so what do I do? Most of my day is spent really trying to look into the data we collect. So we've had over 60 million members join the site since we've mm-hmm. launched. More than 20,000 join a day. What are they doing on the site? What are they talking about? What insights can we glean right. from that? And, and not in so a... So you're dealing with the data now before you were doing, you were doing PR. Solely so PR. So you were spinning. Well... Which is what PR is. I mean, that's look. I almost you know, you're, you're, I you're, wanted to get into PR at, at a point in my life, but I, it's a it's a challenging but exciting challenge type of thing. How do I take something that people might take one way, and how can I spin it into something that's more attractive? You've done it many times in the in the past nine minutes. You know, it's it, you're clearly good at, at, at what you do because um, you make it sound very glitterly, uh, glittery and, and kind of glam. <laughs> it's yeah, impressive. So, you know, PR people hate the term serum, but I, I'm not going to argue the point. The point is, yeah, we take it in. Pre- Presented in a different light. Yeah. Um, and so now it, it's it's still part of that. That's part and parcel mm-hmm. of my role, hence why I'm sitting here talking to sure. you. I also work across the, the company as part of the leadership group to sort of say, where do we need to go next? What do we need to do with our product to change it in a way that delivers on people's expectations? What do we need to do to make it continue to grow and deliver? So one of the things we're about to launch is dating coaches. coaches. <laughs> and like, you know, I say that sometimes and people are like, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, back up. Coaching like what? Coaching mm. people how to have an affair? Yeah. We're coaching people how to have an affair because the whole point is we're in the business of successful affairs, which mm. are undiscovered affairs. Well, I mean, are you in the business of, of, of successful affairs? Because I feel like you only kind of get to claim that if you're seeing them through. I feel like you guys are like more giving the you're kind of helping launch the affairs how they how they go is however someone you know does when they finally meet up or if they meet up or or whatever yeah but that fails to recognize the the key strategy around why ashley madison has been so successful our biggest competition Mm -hmm. bar none has always been and probably will always be the workplace because you spend 10 12 whatever hours a day there you know this concept of your work husband and your work wife you know how many times you've heard people hooking up at christmas parties even though they're married that's where people traditionally have had affairs Mm. but in this day and age it's incredibly a bad idea because not only you potentially risking your marriage you're risking your job we're built on this concept of mutually assured destruction. Mm -hmm. Now, this was a concept that was originally down in the Cold War that if Russia had nukes and we had nukes, nobody would ever use nukes, right? Mm -hmm. So our point of the business was if you're having an affair with a married person who's not within your work circle, so not reporting to you or you reporting Mm -hmm. to him or her, not within your familial uh, you know, circles are not your sister-in-law, not your brother-in-law yeah. and not your neighborhood. You lessen your chances. So now what we're trying to do is help people have an affair with another married person, mm-hmm. because if she's married and, and wants to maintain her marriage, which a lot of them do, mm-hmm. and I'm married and I want to maintain my marriage, neither one's going to go bunny boiler and then close it up and screw up the whole damn affair. So yeah, we are in the business of sex full affairs and we're taking it to the next level with coaches to help guys, because here's the, the funny thing, mm-hmm. you know, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, 
Um, a lot of guys were getting married and now they're coming to the website, right? Mm. They didn't, they missed the whole online dating phenomenon. They never really got on eHarmony. Right. Or I've read this. So they I've don't read, even I, know how it works. I've read the talking point. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's true. But, and I think that goes across all dating platforms is where we, we've not taught men. We barely taught men how to talk to women in real life. Correct. And now we're asking them to figure out how to do it without all these, uh, these nonverbals and these, uh, intonations and whatnot. And now when we're adding, uh, infidelity onto, on top of it, these guys, I can't imagine how bad the messages are. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. And I've heard this a lot from dudes who are recently, or just people recently divorced. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a lot of listeners who are like in their thirties, forties, and they're leaving their first marriage because they've discovered their sexuality or whatever, but they're like, I don't know what to do now. What do I do with the internet and hooking up or dating? It's daunting. It's it's definitely difficult. And having some sort, I think any dating site, whether it's a marriage dating site or yeah. a match, uh, having some sort of coaching system where people can get some help. Um, I mean, yeah. a match just launched their dating coach product as well yeah. uh, about a month ago, but theirs is only in New York City. Sure. And theirs is kind of interesting. I, I, I would question their sort of approach. You have to phone in and talk to their coach. And I'm like, in a day and an age where nobody talks to nobody, who, what guy's doing that? Uh, I think you can get a lot of reads. And for the same reason, I, I think if the, if the, I think part of that first initial problem is the guy, people in general are just having these miscommunications through the text. So if you're going to have someone help you not have those miscommunications, you don't want to also have those miscommunications via text with the coach. I think having some kind of verbal thing, uh, so you can be like, Oh, is this dude like heavy breathing while he types to me? <laughs> or is he just really fucking nervous? Like, you know, who knows? Yeah. So I mean, yeah, you're right. There's, there's a whole movement to basically try to insert mm. the human component to this technology that that has usurped the traditional dating model, you know, mm. where I go out, I see a pretty girl, I approach her, can I buy a drink, can I get your name, can I get your number? That doesn't exist as much anymore. Mm. I think 50 plus percent of people meet online nowadays, mm. if not higher. Yeah. Now, when you talk to your wife about this the first time when you first went uh, over to Ashley and into Avid Life, how did that conversation go? Cause you're not, and, and I, and again, I respect what, what you're doing, which is fine, but you're not using the same, I'm, I imagine not the same glittery, glam messaging talk points. I, I got to imagine. It was even a, better. It was even better. <laughs> no, I, oh, did, I mean, maybe it did. Maybe you do play it up. I don't, how do you spin that to the wife who you have a way more intimate, probably more honest connection with? Well, I think it was a combination of two things that really sold it for her. First, mm-hmm. I was, I was at home at the time because I had just taken a break. Right. I was, you know, hanging around the house. So getting me out of the house was job number one for her. So she was really excited. She was almost like, I don't really care what you know. I kind of joke. Um, she got it in terms of understanding, you know, working for a Canadian company that oversaw the whole gamut. Cause in Canada, a lot of companies you work for, like particularly in my field, you end up reporting to some other head office and who knows where, you know, Chicago, mm-hmm. LA, New York, and they don't get Canada. They don't get the, 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 the state of our country. And so for the opportunity to sort of flip the model, re- she got why that would appeal to me. So yeah, the infidelity part, she was apprehensive about, you know, mm-hmm. I had to go talk to her parents about it. You yeah. know, Hey, in-laws, you know, I'm, I'm going to go do this thing. Are you cool with it? Cause they, they come from, you know, a bit of the upper crust part of society. You know, they might be considered what you might call blue bloods mm-hmm. and you know, Interestingly enough, they were way more on board than my wife was initially. Mm-hmm. Now, since then, you know, she's seen it and come to the office. I mean, my kids come to the office and they get it. It's just a job. But I also tell you, one of the other things I did tell her is, um, you know, after more about when I went back the second time, you know, and she asked, you know, what, what, what appeals to you about it? And, you know, when I worked ages, I, I rep- represented all the big brands mm-hmm. you can imagine. And some of them included brands that, you know, sparkly beverages. You can pick one of the brands. You can probably get it right. And I felt less honest about how I rep that brand sure. than I do this brand. Their whole thing was we need people to believe we're honest and true. We need them to trust us. So when we say that we're, you know, an ethical company or we're uh, environmentally sound, that they'll trust us. And I'm mm-hmm. like, and then they'd say things like, yeah, we're part of a, you know, a healthy diet. And I'm like, no, you're, you're a sugar pop. It's cool. Like, I love it. I, I drink that stuff, but let's not pretend it is what it isn't. Y'all on the other side, you're really leaning into what it is. Whereas us, yeah. hey, we're going to help your spouse have an affair without you knowing. I am unambiguous about that. Yeah. So I think we're a lot more honest about the nature of what we do, about what the brand represents and what, you know, is happening behind the scenes. And, and that's, well, then that's hopefully that's what's happening now, but you guys were selling the same thing before too, before the hack in, in the summer of 2015. Mm-hmm. Now you, 
I, I think there may have been miscommunication with the person who uh, uh, set us up. You were there during that time? Or, yeah. Okay. Oh, you yeah. Were. Oh, yeah. She said you weren't. Okay. No, I was. I definitely so, was. So let's, let's clue in people who, who don't read all the time, <laughs> uh, which is sadly too many people. In summer 2015, there was a hack of ha- Ashley Madison, this group. They hacked the site and they ended up, uh, rele- they demanded Ashley Madison shut down yeah. where they release all the user data and then mm-hmm. they did. Yeah. And they released like, 36 million like use of names of people uh celebrities were outed um pat i mean there were some celebrities like the duggar dude was on there if you count him as a celebrity or maybe not i don't know was that a bot <laughs> you tell me well look you, you know first and foremost i'm never going to verify who was or wasn't sure, sure, obviously you can, right you, you can imagine i can't i can't do it yeah basically it was all released and reporters just started scanning through documents looking for people that they right. could recognize and so yeah. there was a couple of things about that that did happen and that was wildly unfortunate you know, yeah. we we let our members down. Mm. But one of the things that I find interesting and people, you know, it didn't get picked up as much because I mean, us getting that event was, you know, salacious and it was interesting, but back and then, ironic. yeah, <laughs> back then we didn't verify your email if you signed up. Mm. So if I used your email to sign up, I still could have used the service. Sure. And that wasn't in, that was not a flaw. That was a feature because then if you got busted, Hey, Billy, why are you getting emails from Ashley Madison? I got no idea. I never signed up. Mm. And we, we would say, like, you know, we didn't verify emails. So that was done intentionally. Now we, we flipped that for a lot of different reasons. Sure. So now we do. You got to verify your email, but go, guess what? Go ahead. Go build a Gmail account or Yahoo account. Yeah. You don't use your work account, please. People don't use your work account on Ashley Madison. <laughs> I don't you know deserve, why I need to tell you that. You deserve to get caught. Well, you don't deserve it, but, you know, <laughs> please, just do yourself a favor. Um, and so, yeah, so a lot of emails that people saw maybe on that list mm. weren't necessarily the individual who actually signed up for an account. Sure. But it's just – so – what it, what stuck out to me and what you were saying before was you talked about trust and how you like we're gonna lean into what we do so much that's like we're being pretty transparent. You're gonna trust us and come use our our site to you know cheat on your spouse and have your affair and find your moment. I like that little branding switch for that little bit of time. Really found your moment with that new tagline because um, you guys are back to like um, life, life is short, have an affair. affair. You guys took a little break from it. I noticed you talked about trust. But the big thing, it wasn't the hack that got me bothered because that's going to happen to anyone. There's 12 year olds. They literally had an 11 year old, uh, last week hack into Florida's voting registry. Like that's going to happen. Okay. But the, the stuff that came out, the practices of Ashley Madison mm-hmm. that came out were to me pretty egregious. The, the couple of things that said, I mean, one of the big, the big one to people was the bots yep. that there were a lot of fake accounts. And this is the thing that, plagues a lot of sites um so there was all these accounts of like women and these not just like fake accounts these were fake accounts that were programmed to converse so people were conversing with not real people there was another thing about the whole like deletion you had to pay for like a full deletion but apparently the people who paid to have their accounts fully wiped didn't actually have them wiped these are things where i'm like why trust Ashley Madison now when you're spinning, you're giving us the same spin from yeah. before? No, absolutely. You know, we, we, we let our members down. We, we didn't get it right. So on that subject matter. So what was interesting? And again, you know, I saw you make some faces so you can correct if I had something no, well, wrong. I, nuance. It's nuance. And that's the problem with, you know, what happened to us. It was a big, bold, you know, act. And there was a lot of information. It wasn't, as you said, it wasn't the act that was really news. It was what came out after the fact. Mm-hmm. You know, and I get that. Um, what people don't get was, is that the bots, uh, in fact, had been already started to be turned off. Okay. But the, why? But they shouldn't be there in okay. the first place. So remember this. Avid Life Media bought Ashley Madison okay. in 2007. Okay. And that process to start fixing the internal issues with the with the with the site and the coding was well underway so we'd already turned it off in canada in the u.s and australia long before those events had happened i think i read i think i read it was what like uh maybe two or it was like 2013 was when they were off in the united states yeah that and and what what was the layover from some of that was that conversations that were ongoing were just kind of still there is that why there were still bots going on well, they were like leftover bot conversations. There was, so there was, there was, you know, the, the code was such that, you know, we were moving us to a more professional platform, to a, a higher degree mm-hmm. of sophistication. And not to say it was rickety previously, but it wasn't done as the best practices. And so just, you know, hitting an off switch so it all would go off. 
didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And so you had to be careful about ensure, ensuring that as it shut down, it didn't break everything else. Yeah. And so that was part of the issue. And, and so we went through that. It doesn't, it doesn't, you know, make it okay for what was done, mm. but it, it is part and parcel. And what was fascinating to me is that even after it got turned off in the U S you know, our biggest market, okay. you know, business was continuing to grow and they were never designed to talk to people who had paid money. Never. Mm. So if you got on the site and bought our tokens and started talking, that wasn't what it was. But why were like, are you saying that they were implemented before like, you guys, like bought it? Okay. Yeah. And so why, was, why do sites, I mean, it was it's, it's obvious, but do you want to say why sites, employ these bots because it's not like Ashley Madison's the only site that has like no. done this type of practice. I think, you know, I wasn't there when, when obviously that all happened. Yeah, I started yeah. in 2013. So I kind of got there when it was already being shutting, was being sure. shut down. Do they, do they kind of warn you? Be like, look, if anyone ever asks about the bots, here's what's going on. Or was it, uh, was it a shock to you pers- as well? Well, you know, I mean, I'm not going to go into all the details, but I mean, I, I, I had conversations around it and come to understand what I, what I know that mm-hmm. it was there being shut down. Sure. And it was designed twofold. One, to get you to understand how the system worked. Mm-hmm. Um, much like any old chatbot today is, is deployed. You know, you get onto a new system, chatbot pops up. I mean, they're ubiquitous across every site now. Yeah, a little customer service. Now, the one, difference yeah. is, you know, it is versus what, you know, so yeah. big difference, but still happen. And, and two, obviously it was a conversion metric, helping people understand the site, how it works, how it might, might answer your need state. And so once you got in, then you would only be talking to real members. Were the bots counted it, whenever you guys would put out stats before the hack, like about user numbers, like were the bots part of that or were the user numbers that were reported, say you'd read in Huffington Post about Ashley Madison, there's this new site, it's all rebrand, whatever. Uh, is the number there including those types of accounts? You know, the bots were never part of any of the numbers. Okay. So that, so when you guys advertise, we have this many members, that yeah. those are real. So the 60 million member mark we talk about since 2002, that is the actual number okay. of accounts that have been opened up. Real ex- humans. Excluding any fraud. So sure. anybody that comes in and we fraud you out, like if you're a cam girl and you come out and you're trying to scam, yeah. we, that's not counted. I don't want, that's not part okay. of our system. We, 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 we eradicate that, that profile real quick. Mm. And if a member just by happen, happens to talk to that profile before we get to them, um, I think 80% of fraud profiles are, are punted out in under eight seconds. Mm-hmm. But if you happen to send a message, we refund your credits. Okay. We don't even send you a message. You just get the credits back. Mm-hmm. So that, cause it, we don't want that experience for our members. So yeah, th- that, that's part of our past. And I know people have concerns about it. And one of the things we did to sort of help people understand, you know, yeah, we did it. We put out our mail culpas, but we also hired Ernst and Young at great expense and frustration mm-hmm. to me. Um, to come to in and audit, basically. Audit, yeah, yeah, exactly. Go in. They wouldn't use the word audit because it's, you know, financial, yada, 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 but whatever. Basically, they were paying in my butt. They looked at every piece of code. They looked at every aspect of our business. They Robert Mueller'd you. you. Did they ever? And <laughs> for months, and what, and they put out a whole report that says, yeah, we looked, we could not find them. It doesn't exist. It's not part mm. of the program anymore. They looked at how many active women there are compared to how many active paid men there are. And they looked at, you know, how many people are signing up on a regular basis. Mm. And they put out a report. Anybody can read it at ashleymadison.com 2017 report. Mm-hmm. Is that something that is like, uh, I don't know what we'd call it otherwise, but this audit that's not an audit, is that a thing that sites tend to go through? Do I, cause it sounds, when I read that that did, I was like, that sounds great. And I would love as someone who uses sites like this would be like, I would love to see that happen like every other year, maybe on a less extensive case. If it, you know, when it's at, at lesser cost, you guys obviously had to do it because holy shit. But if that, like, that's just thing that all these sites, I would, I would love for Tinder, for Bumble to, yeah, put out a little report, an independent thing that, you know, that yeah. just shows like what's really going on here. Cause then trust amongst any of these dating sites is really hard. Um, especially now that they've all been, you know, they're all freemium and they're figuring out the ways they want to monetize it. And they're also experimenting with ways to monetize it. Mm-hmm. Bumble, which is my, you know, recently I used to get matches all the time and now I almost never do. And so I kind of stopped using it cause I could tell I was being bumped down cause they want me to pay for the boost. Right. And so why should not just Ashley Madison, but why should any of these people who want to do these things, why should they be trusting kind of any of y'all? Well, I, you know, I think, Trust is an interesting concept because, you know, we always talk about trust is earned, but quite frankly, trust is given every single day. We, mm-hmm. we trust everything until you break the trust. And unfortunately we did that. Okay. So we had to go about doing that. You know, we, we clearly had to speak to our existing members, our former members, our potential new members, mm-hmm. the media stakeholders, everybody needed to see there was validity to the business, yeah. that there was something behind the door still worthwhile coming to visit us for. So we will be doing that report every single year. We did every it year. 
Not as extensive. Not, no, so, not as expensive. <laughs> well, so we do it now. We do it ourselves. Okay. So the first year we did it with Ernst & Young. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it sets a baseline. And, and my expectation is you should measure us against that. So we did it again in 2018. So that report went out in February of this year. Mm-hmm. And you can see the numbers are, are fairly similar. You know, I think it was 4.8 million new members joined in 2017. 5.2 million joined in. Close to one-to-one gender ratio. Exactly. Which was, which was interesting. Right. And we can mm-hmm. talk about that if you want to get into it. And so you're not seeing huge variations. When you start to see huge variations, then you should ask questions. And mm-hmm. then I might have to go about it again to come get someone to certify if I saw a huge jump in something different to help explain it. But every year, I'm going to do that report. Rather than celebrate a big jump, you'll question it first before you pop well, I know, the champagne. I know people like you would question it. Yeah. And you know what? You're the kind of guy who should question it. And I'm the kind of guy that should have an answer for it that you can right. believe in. And that's why we do it. And to the degree of other sites, I think... I think people would be a lot more comfortable, not just dating, yeah. a lot of different brands, if they were able to provide more transparent numbers about what's happening on these communities, for sake of argument. Mm. Because you're asking us to spend either our time or our personal capital. Yeah. You know, Facebook's personal capital. You're giving up a boatload of your personal information to them yeah. that they're going to turn around and sell. And okay, most of us have made, you know, peace with that, but What's happening? Where are you? Like, what kind of money are you getting? Okay, they're publicly traded. I can see some of it, but there's a lot going on. Clearly, now we're finding mm-hmm. out that we didn't know about before. So, what else can we do from a transparency standpoint? And you know, we're really committed to that as much as we can be. Yeah, and when, and you and you left in, like the year after the after the hack, April it, 2016. April, any particular reason was it? Well, you know, obviously 2015 was a bit of a, a sure. tough year. I, I don't know if it was a, I mean, I don't want to like begin your business, but like you let go, you fight. I just kind of want to get an idea of like, was it hack related? Was it unhack related? Because well, you came I, back so soon after. Yeah, everything's hack related after that, right? Sure. In a sense. So basically you, you sort of alluded a little bit to it. Um, we launched a sort of a new brand initiative, okay. Find Your Moment. And, you know, they were... New management came in in 2016 and they were looking to push the, the brand slightly in a different direction. In between, you know, what I'd gone through and, you know, what I felt the brand really represented, I kind of said, you know what, you're going to do something that isn't where I would push it, mm-hmm. but good for you. Let's respectfully disagree, shake hands and part ways. Sure. So I did that. Okay. Um, you know, they, they put that out there and, and part of it was, and I respected this just to sort of say to the market, Hey, we were this big married dating brand. Um, now we're not sure what we are or what you want us to be more importantly right. because of what we just went through, right? Like crazy. And so we're going to put it out and say, you know, singles, come on to the site. Married people, come on to the site. Kink community, come on to the site. Right. How'd the kink community thing play? Did you get like, did you see that really take hold or didn't? Because King Community is looking, I mean, Ruby in general, I, I don't, I don't know all the brands that you may have. If I don't know if it's more than those three that we talked about, yeah. Um, you know, when we were off mic or or not, but like King Community really wants a good functioning website because FetLife is really clunky, mm. but it's their only option, right? And whoever wants to make a quality kink meeting site will do quite well. Yeah, and and you know, to be frank, we weren't experts in that space. Sure. It, it, it is a space where you've got to know what you're talking about. Sure. I know a lot of, I know a lot of experts who would be happy to consult with y'all if you guys change your mind. All right. And that's not even me. So, <laughs> you know, I think what we saw is, you know, looking at our primary market or domestic market where, mm. which is North America, you know, that's where almost the exclusive focus that year was in terms of our marketing, in terms of, um, our product innovation and everything. And 70% of the, of the, of the pain members, were listed as married people. Mm -hmm. So the market really told us, hey, guys, you created something. You created a whole niche dating space, and we want you to be that. Just be better. Right. Yes. Be the best. Be what you said you were before. Mm -hmm. Get there. And, you know, at that time, the new manager kind of said, that's not what we signed up for. We don't want to be that. Um, And So what is it that they wanted to be? Like... Well, I think they wanted to be a more, what they quoted as a more modern dating platform that was open to a lot of different things. And I, and I can appreciate that. That sounds so wishy-washy. Like, we just want to be whatever. Well, I don't know. I, I, wanted, I, I think they had a really good intent. Mm-hmm. But the challenge is, tr- when you try to be everything to everyone, you're nothing to nobody. Exactly. And that I think that ultimately became the challenge. When you're the number one brand in a space, you know, you, you might look to do maybe product extensions, brand extensions, mm-hmm. and builds. But to do a wholesale flip... And say, we're no longer that. We're everything. It confuses the market. Mm-hmm. And, and that's not just us. That's anybody. Yeah. And people put questions. So, But nonetheless, people stepped coming to us, kept coming to us as married people. Okay, that's who we're going to be. And then yeah. the ownership group 
rang me up and said, Hey, look, we're going to return to life is short. Have an affair. Can right. you come back? Yeah. Okay. And I said, Oh, okay. Let's, let's, let's go have some chats. What happened after the past year? What you guys, where are you at business wise? And things were growing. Things were still mm-hmm. continuing. Millions of people signed up. Um, we had hired a whole net new security team. We'd hired a separate privacy officer mm-hmm. and we brought in a lot of new developments from a cultural perspective that really, really appealed to me. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, yeah, let's do this. And let's, let's help people have better, more successful affairs. Yeah. So what, what are you finding some of the reasons, like, uh, when you're trying to share with your users, why people have affairs, what, where are you getting kind of that data from? Is it kind of, do you, I haven't made an account in Ashley Madison. I might have maybe a long time ago. Can't quite remember. Uh, I never really scrolled through the hacked information. <laughs> I was like, Oh, that's my email address. Oh, I forgot that was 2012. It was a weird year. No, uh, but did you like, do people self report that kind of on the site? Do like people share on their profiles why they're having the affairs? Like where, where do you kind of get that? So it's a combination of things. So, um, you know, obviously when you sign up, you, you either sign up as a, um, attached male seeking male or attached male seeking female or, you know, Female seeking female, mm. attached female, single female. Sure. Uh, so not a ton of information from that perspective. We, we actually don't want to collect too much information in this day and age. We want to sure. limit the digital lipstick as it were. Yeah. So one of the things we do do that I find fascinating is we work with a lot of academics. Mm-hmm. Uh, we go to professor, professors, university researchers to sort of say, Hey, if you really want to understand the dynamic of infidelity in the world of monogamy, you know, you can't study the student population because cheating on your college boyfriend is not the same as a 40 year old mother of two signing up to Ashton Madison. But aren't they it's, uh, it, at the heart of it? Aren't they kind of a bit no. just in shorter terms? Not even remotely. It, it just be, well, okay. Well, how would you differentiate the two? So that's the fascinating. So one of the studies that came out about a year ago from Alicia Walker, uh, university of Missouri, and she did a whole study on why women cheat. Okay. Power pragmatism in the story of female infidelity. And it's the complete flip of what everybody thinks. These women were all coming to Ashley Madison because they were in sexless or orgasmless marriages. Isn't that what the assumption is? I thought no. that's, what, that's what I'd guess. That'd most be my pe- first guess. Most like people say, oh, men cheat for sex and women cheat for emotional validation. Trust me, that's yeah. what everyone thinks. Men are the horny bastards. I'm trying to change that. We're all a bunch of horny bastards. <laughs> and this is the truth of the matter. Here's the thing that people fail to grasp. You know, Esther Perel will go out and say that female infidelity has jumped by 40% since the 90s. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying she's wrong, but I think she interprets the data wrong. I don't think women have increased in infidelity. I think they've just increased talking about it. Yeah. Because women have always cheated, as men have, but the consequences for women were far greater. And at one point, you know, the scarlet letter, you lost your financial means, you lost your mm. kids, you lost your livelihood. Man, you could get killed in some scenarios. So Same with kink. It's not that there's more kinky people. It's that more people are willing to right. share that they're kinky because we're going to be a more sex-positive society. Exactly. We're not quite there. I so, mean, oh, far from it, but more than more the so, 90s. So the idea is women are just a little bit more comfortable talking mm. about because the consequences have been lessened to a degree. It's still not they also There's also going. with, you know, that more financial stability allows them to, if I get found out, I'm not going to be homeless. Right. You know, yeah, we're not quite, I wouldn't say we, we have equality across the, the sexes, of course but not. we're close enough from that, from the perspective of they, they can get a job. A, yeah, that's can, just the trend. That just explains the, the yeah, trend. Yeah, 1950s. Right I mean, trust me, I, I'm positive that that generation, the golden generation, mm-hmm. they were screwing everybody's neighbor yeah. and they just dealt with it. They were also, you know, that's that's kind of when swinging started to take hold, right? Post uh, World War II. Exactly. Hey, yo, if I die, fuck my wife for me. It was like, okay, Jim, I got you. <laughs> oh, bang, Beth. So we're just, we're just building a better mousetrap from uh-huh. that perspective. So in her study, what was also fascinating is that there's a whole chapter in her book called There's Always Time for Big Dick. Mm. And a lot of these women were basically saying, look, he's not cutting. I love my husband. I actually mm. love my marriage. I don't want to get divorced. Everything is fantastic. Nothing. I, I don't want to change anything, no. but I need some big D energy in this world and I'm not going to get it from him. So I'm going to go find it here. So it's very, you know, I don't want to say transactional, but it's specific. Do you have any information? Do you guys have any information on how many ethically non-monogamous people use Ashley Mass? No, because that's something, you know, trying to collect that is really, even difficult. if it's anecdotal, like through say scanning through the profiles, looking for ENM, ethical non-monogamy, poly. So we, we don't scan the profiles for that right. purpose. Like sure. we don't, we don't but, look, but could, is that a thing like you could do? 
In theory. In theory, we could we could create drop down menus control, where people could identify. I meant just more like control F in the back end, just be like, look for these terms and get an idea of like, is, is this a because I could see the non monogamous community, like ethically non monogamous community, using a site like Ashley Madison. Um, oh, and they be, do. Anecdotally, I've spoken yeah. to some. In fact, I have a great story. So this, this these two people, they're from Canada. They met on the site. They were mm-hmm. both in in monogamous relationships elsewhere, married. Um, they ended up divorcing their respective spouses, hooked up with one another, got married, mm-hmm. and then realized monogamy is not just for us. Like it's just not a, it's not us. We don't want to do this, but we love each other. So let's you know what? Let's go back to Ashley. So each of them have their own account on Ashley mm-hmm. Madison, and they're very you know ethically non monogamous. They talk about their dates. They have clear expectations and processes and how it works for them. And Ashley facilitates that because again, it's something they don't want the world knowing about. Do you do do you see Ashley Madison as f- just f- simply facilitating affairs, or do you see AM as promoting affairs? It's it's you know the, the the idea that we promote it is right and wrong because obviously here I am talking about it, so yeah, it's, that's a form of promotion, right? Mm-hmm. But the idea that me talking about Ashley Madison or some amazing thirty second commercial we put together is going to convince you to have an affair if everything's fine in your marriage. That's the falsehood. So what we're doing more than anything is making people aware of the option. Mm. So I wasn't being disingenuous when I said that we actually do save a lot of marriages from divorce. Good marriages that otherwise probably would end up in divorce that didn't need to. Mm. Um, and so, you know, and the, and the affected spouse, for, for lack of a better term, he or she would probably disagree with me. Yeah. But if, you know, I come home and my wife's happy. And, you know, my kids are getting what they need and I'm getting what I mean and everything's working. And she just so happens to be getting something outside to fulfill that, that, that itch. Otherwise, you know, she would have been unhappy. Doesn't that make us, doesn't that sound like a lot better than, okay, let's go spend a hundred thousand dollars on lawyers and blow it all up. But that's, that's a false choice because it's only two things. Like I like life short, like, like, what is it? Life is. Life yeah. is short, have an affair. And I love that. But in between, it's more like life is short. Uh, maybe first have a conversation with your spouse about like what you guys want and need in the relationship. And then if all that doesn't work out, but you also don't want to break up the marriage, have an affair. Right. Doesn't fit on a business card as easily. Business but, you know, I, I feel like that's the difference between like that's life is short, have an affair is very promoting. It's promote, have an affair. I mean. If you, if it was really about saving marriages, you'd be like, here's some alternatives or here's the common reasons why people cheat and maybe you can go work on these things. But if those things don't work and you want to otherwise maintain this marriage, we're the fucking site for you to do that. So we do have those tips on our blog and on our website. Okay. We actually do. I will go look and at those. And it actually, you're, you're presupposing that people aren't having those conversations. No, now, no, no, I'm, they're not. And I'm saying they are. Should, Oh, okay. They are. I talk to members all the time. They had, I, how many women have I talked to who went to their husband and she's like, I'm into kink. I'm into this. Mm -hmm. I'm into a little bit of role play. And he's like, no, that ain't for me. There was a great uh, uh, article we put out. I think it was in Cosmo. A a female member basically got married young and everything was great. And she said, Hey, I need you to go down on me. And he said, nah, "Nah, bro. (laughs) Nah, that's not for me, dog. He Never put said, a ring on it till he's eating your pussy. Everybody, it's like, what are you doing? And she's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So you, I'm going to do all this work. I'm going for lockjaw, you know, and it's a no for you. He actually said, I quote, it's a hard no. Yeah, it's a hard no. It's like that, but that you should never put a ring on it, not knowing that it was a hard no. It's like well, that's okay, and that's fair. <laughs> but I mean, you know, love is love is yeah. hard. You know, people people you know fall in love for all sorts of reasons, and then you find out that's not going to happen. I mean, that's a ridiculous thing to say in this day and age, quite frankly. Yeah. <laughs> so, but nonetheless, she still loved him. Everything mm-hmm. else was fine, save for that. So she signed up for Ashley to have some wild sex. Yeah. Have you had to have those straightforward conversations in your marriage where it's like, hey, I'm looking for some more of this. I need some of that. Not necessarily around monogamy or non-monogamy, but just in general. You know, like I said, one of the benefits of working at Ashley is I do get to hear why women join the mm-hmm. site and, and why men join the site. And I take some of those lessons. I internalize them and say, how can I be a better husband? So, yeah, I think we've built a better marriage because of it. We've mm-hmm. had more open conversations across the spectrum, not just what happens in the bedroom because it's so much more than that, but absolutely. And I think it helps us build a, a better family unit because we're open, we're clear about our expectations. We both know what's at stake. And, you know, we've had friends who have had affairs. We've had friends who've survived it. We've had some who haven't. And you have you friends know, be like, can you slip me a few free tokens? Then? <laughs> well, trust me. It's always, whenever you go to a cocktail party, you know, and they find out you're the dude that works at Ashley Madison, yeah. everyone comes to find you sneak off in a corner and just have a little side conversation, yeah, 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 yeah. but it's all on the down low. Right. right. Uh, but no, yeah, I think, 
we've been better because of my experience there because of that. Yeah. Is there a specific, and I asked you this as someone who makes a living finding out why I'm bad at dating uh, and just broadcasting it, but is there something specific you've brought home, whether it is a revelation of, whoa, do I actually leave the seat up that often <laughs> or where you learned something and you had a question for your wife? Like, is, do you have a specific example of something you brought home that helped improve the, the marriage? Well, I think the first thing I brought home was, you know, not talking too much about my wife's sex life in public. And so, sure. Not as, <laughs> I know, and I don't, I don't no, mean I don't like think. asking about the, you know, I don't need to be like, yo, so are you guys doing anal? But just, is there something that's helped improve the relationship? That can be sexual. That can be romantic. That can be, am I giving you amount, the amount of affection that when I'm on trips, like it, yeah, I think the biggest thing is, you know, I'm, I, you know, I spend a lot of time just thinking. I'm an internal thinking kind mm -hmm. of guy. I internalize a lot of my thoughts. And like a lot of typical dudes, you know, I don't have a high emotional quotient sure. that I express. And so what I've learned is that, you know, if I'm thinking things, if I'm contemplating an issue or being pensive, I need to explain to her what that issue is so she understands, you know, there's all those memes about, you know, the girl lying in bed, the guy beside her, and she's like, oh, does he like me? Does he not like me? Is he going to leave me? And he's thinking about, oh, that cornbread in the fridge. I wonder if it's still there, right? Yeah. So, you know, being more expressive, being more open to when I got an issue, just not necessarily seeking your help, but just explain to you, I'm going to be moody and grumpy because of this issue. Right. So you don't think it's you. You don't think it's a problem, but I'm working through this. And so I got to talk to you about it just so you know what I'm doing. And, and what was the thing that you saw, like, I guess maybe with data or from Ashley, what, what prompted that? So every week we talk to members every mm -hmm. single week, uh, me and some of my colleagues, we get on the phone, we talk to the members, we hear their stories and it's hearing their voices and hearing them go through the emotional aspect of what led them to this, this rather grand decision that really internalized my thoughts. So you're not going to glean everything with the data. Data is more about demographics. It's the who's and the where's. But the what's and the why's, that comes in the speaking to the people and doing some of the surveys that we do every single week. Okay. So now why the fuck is Brazil so big on Ashley Madison? They're, they're, they're what are they, number two with you They're the number one international market international, in the world. Yeah. So number two globally <laughs> next to the US, but number one internationally. Why? Yeah. That was a weird stat I saw. <laughs> yeah. Um, have you ever been there? No. It's, 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 it's a weird dynamic of a culture. So culturally, you know, it has this dominant Catholic overtone to every aspect of this culture, okay. right? So really, really clinched tight on the morals and conservative from that standpoint. But then have you ever been to Carabana? Ever been to, you know, Samba Festival? You know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a sex fest. Yeah. It, visually. I'm not saying mm. everyone's just getting down, but the hell a lot a of sexual that's vibe. It's a huge sexual vibe, right? And so you have this idea of this, these two counterpoints. It's, it's the embodiment of the Madonna whore prospect. And, Women there are probably across Latin America, and Brazil is just the largest one, mm. um, a little bit behind North America in terms of equality and women's rights, and they're gaining popularity. And I think they're taking agency over their sexual lives. And they've decided, you know what? I am woman, hear me roar. I'm going to get mine because, you know what? If you think I'm sexual, guess mm. what? I am, but I'm not getting enough from you. Do you think that's actually changing in the in the culture or is it that just the discovery of a site like Ashley Madison helps facilitate what they may already have been doing with the pool guy? Well, I would love to say that, you know, we're, we're helping from that perspective, but, uh, you know, we're not that huge. You know, quite frankly, you know, 60 million people over 17 years, it's a big number, mm. but, you know, I don't think we've changed things. We've really just allowed people a different space and a better space mm -hmm. to do it because yeah, the pool boy, again, bad choice. So I think we're just giving people another alternative to what was traditionally a few options, going to the bar, picking up some guy and giving them a little bit more control over the process. Yeah. Yeah. So now I also saw the, so the gender ratio was the other thing that like stood out to me. I was like looking up on things and it was like, uh, I think circa, I think out of the report or 2016, I saw like a five to one guy to girl ratio, right? Is that kind of vaguely right? So I believe that's, wasn't yeah. with the company. That no, not, I'm not talking about right now. I'm talking about like 2016. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that's some of the numbers. So that was, they put out, they looked at it differently than I would. So look, if you're a guy, what oh. you want to know is if, if I give Ashley Madison money to get access to the whole, all these know, ladies, side, all these ladies or whatever, what's my competition like, mm -hmm. right? How many other dudes am I fighting against? And what's my perspective pool of women? It's so funny that it's fighting against because like, dude, she's having an affair. Like clearly, like she's not going to do for only one person to. <laughs> well, well you, know, you never know. Look, I mean, women she's are at going... least, She's at least persuadable. You don't want to sign up and, and walk into a sausage yeah. party. So we totally yeah. get it. So what we look at now, our key sort of uh, stat with respect to the, the, the community there is how many active paid guys are there. Okay. And how many active females? Because I don't, if you, if you sign up for an account as a woman and never went back to it, 
Who cares? You're not on my site. Yeah, you're not an active user. I, I would love for you to be, and we'll do everything in our power to sort of convince you, but you're not. So we only look at active female accounts against active paid males. Because if you're a dude who didn't pay, you can't talk mm. to the women, so you're not competition. Right. You have no no prospects, mm. right, to to engage with a female. So is the current, like, because right now the gender ratio is about one-to-one. One, so vaguely, right? in 2018, the gender ratio was 1.11 one, one, yeah. female Active females account for every mm-hmm. one active pay male account. So just right. slightly but more. But now women. is that ratio that way because it's being measured differently than it was like in 2016? Yes. When you, okay. So what do you think? I guess, what, is, do you guys have the data on what the SIP, if you measured it the same way back then, do you know what it would have been kind of? So if we measured the way I measured, I know that in 2014 and in 2015, users, yeah. when I, we, cause I actually had Ernst and Young come in just to do a private report sure. um, for my own knowledge yeah uh, just to verify some stuff that the signups in those two years was exactly one-to-one in the u.s male to female okay. using the active paid males and the active females because the other the other metric doesn't make any sense it's useless because if a woman signs up why am i measuring if a guy signs up and he never uses like why am i if he's never paid a token well, never and he's paid not a token able, yeah. or never did anything if you sign up as a as you know just a lot of people a, sign up for a lot of sites and never actually touch it but they just make a thing and right. then they abandon it and if you're you, you should never count those people right i just want to make sure like i'm looking because to me otherwise it looks like oh like it really yeah. evened out and wonder no. why no so 2014 2015 one-to-one one-to-one uh-huh. And you know, you get to 2017, one to one, 20. I'll tell you right now, you go back to probably about 2013. Those numbers are going to be pretty st- static. Now it's interesting. You get to Latin America. It's two to one females to males. Yeah. Across all the, well, we run out of batteries. You need another guy to come in. <laughs> it's like, for, well, I need someone for the next 20 minutes while Jim's getting ready. Everyone talks Again. about the Latin lover from a male perspective. Sure. You, know, you can go all night. Well, those women are, but, Oof. but they're, they're clearly have a much higher drive yeah. and they're, they're seeking something. Yeah. Do you think, it's an easier sell to get women to be an active user on the site than a guy. Um, assuming we have, we've sold everyone on trusting with the data part. Right. Well, say cybersecurity is taken care of. Do you think it's easier to get women to trust trying Ashley Madison because it's free versus dudes who now, who still have to pay to be like an active user after what happened? Because I think before pre hack, post hack, that just having that seedling of the whole bot thing. Like, yeah. do, do you think that makes people nervous or do you think people are over it? Like, I, you know, it's funny when I do talk to the members, so you've the, seen the graphs that I have. The events that I've, I've seen, you know, from the events of 2015, no member ever brings it up. And mm-hmm. I have members that are still on the site from pre 2015, mm-hmm. men and women. Okay. I was on the site back then. I'm still on the site. N- never created a doubt from their sure. perspective. Hmm. Um, cause they took the right steps. You know, they, they created a burner email account sure. and you know, it didn't, it didn't affect them. Do you think, uh, do you think there are other sites, major sites out there engaging in practices that y'all have corrected? It wouldn't shock me. Wouldn't shock Absolutely. Me. Because even people are, sites are being popped up elsewhere outside of North America where there's far less scrutiny. Yeah. And absolutely. I mean, is there something that someone listening right now, ho- hopefully signing up for Ashley Madison, if they are your type of clientele, but in general signing up for a new site, maybe they're just out of divorce and they're going online dating for the first time, or they saw a fancy 30 <laughs> second ad for something new. It, do you have any tips for what someone should look out for? Right. You know, look, you're a 55 year old guy. And you know, got the you know middle tire kind of mm-hmm. hanging around your waist, and the thirty-year-old, six-foot-two blonde model says you're the greatest-looking guy she's ever seen. I love you, guy, but let's be honest. Let, let you know that's not happening. It's too good to be true, right? right. So you gotta you gotta just check those things. Look, the first time someone says, "Hey, follow me into my link to my private conversation room," mm-hmm. that's a guarantee. You know. You don't need to do that. We built the site so you can have all the communications on the platform. Use it for that purpose. It mm-hmm. limits your digital lipstick. And if you're on any site, any any dating site, and man or woman asks you to go to another place, and I'm not talking like a kick or yeah. or you know some we're other, talking some like weird bit li right. link. Yeah. yeah, don't click on those. Mm-hmm. Really bad idea. Um, you know, I mean, the interesting thing is, I, I'm not from a competitive standpoint. You know, the, those other brands. That's not my issue. You know, who our biggest issue going forward is going to be. The work who? No, Facebook. Oh, Facebook. Facebook. Oh, people don't hit on people on Facebook. It's weird. No. It's creepy. It's not what, what you're supposed about? to do. No, they've no, launched they do a dating it product. Sh- oh, the da- yeah, but it's not really. I don't think anyone's really going to want to do that. Are you kidding me? I got a profile. Oh, it is huge. Well, you made it for research because you're not actually using it unless you have but something to tell the wife. But here's the amazing thing. So here's the amazing. And this is why I tell you it's competition. Uh-huh. 
married people can go on it. So I it says right on my Facebook profile that I'm married. I put in my relationship okay. status as married, but I can still get on the dating product. Go over there. All it says is Paul, it's 45. I can put up whatever pictures I want. Mm-hmm. It doesn't tell you if I'm single, married, or otherwise. And it doesn't connect me with any of my friends. Meaning, so long as I'm smart and I, I make sure that all my wife's friends are friends on my Facebook page, they'll never see my dating profile. I can pretend to be anybody I want. I don't know, man. If I was married and trying to have an affair discreetly, like if I, if, if, if I was one of those people who didn't trust Ashley Madison, I would be trusting Facebook way less even. Okay. I'd be like, if there's anyone at that time you wouldn't trust, it'd be like Facebook, not a chance. Yeah. But we've seen reports that up to 30% of other dating profiles like Tinder and Eat Match and Harmony are married people pretending to be single. So they're going out to where their wives, single friends are totally there and risking it. So Facebook is actually created a far if, better if you want to have an affair go on ashley madison don't go on facebook don't be fucking well, i agree with that i mean it's a, there's 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 a thing was like oh you said a good thing there <laughs> we like billy yeah is there any um demo stat thing that has shocked you at some point where maybe you got some report and you were like huh like with me in brazil i was like oh that's interesting there far more 60s and 70 year old people than i would have ever anticipated including women yeah there is actually and this yeah this, <laughs> this blew my mind this one woman uh and i can i can name her because she she's publicly come out with her story bobby sure. goldman okay bobby, bobby bobby she was married to this you know uh well-known hollywood producer you know unfortunately he passed away in her late 60s and she got into a bit of a funk, a little bit of a depression. And she went to her therapist and her therapist said, Hey, you, you, you need to get some D. You need to get some sex. Mm-hmm. And she says, Well, okay, that sounds like a good idea. So she signs up at all the traditional dating sites, you know, looking for guys of her age. And guess what? Every single one of them just wanted a caretaker, a, a, a wife replacement, someone to fold the laundry, cook the eggs, make the coffee. And she's like, No, no, I, I need, I need a Give little. Give it to me. Right. So she then goes to Ashley Madison. Yeah. And she starts dating married men who are there for that exact reason. Mm-hmm. She gets all the things she's looking for and then writes a Broadway play about it. The Curvy Widow. Wow. Yeah. And so that was a really eye-opening thing to me. That not only did I expect guys to be there. Oh, yeah. Viagra created the whole generation of a bunch of, you know, old wood looking around. But the fact that there was these women really flipped my head around. Yeah, they're, they're, they're sexual beings still. They don't lose that necessarily. Mm-hmm. And... They, they they want things in a different way in a different capacity, and it just really undermine underlines the need for communication, regardless of what stage your relationship's at. Don't think that you know because your wife's sixty five or seventy that she still doesn't have interest in maybe exploring some new ideas. Talk about it. Get in there. Find Don't go out. cheat on your wife because you think she's too old to be banging. Maybe she wants to be banging. You two need to talk. Everyone fucking talk to each other. If you talk to each other enough, you might not even need AshleyMadison.com. But if you're after that conversation goes bust, yeah, you know, sometimes affairs are, you know, necessary. Absolutely. And she, you know, took no shame in the fact that she was out there helping these married mm-hmm. men, you know, ha- fulfill their lives and their dreams and all mm-hmm. their wishes in a certain extent. And it was amazing. I thought it was really heartwarming. But I also, you know, get into some stuff that is also more um, on the more emotional side. I have this one member we, we, we were talking to and she married a man that was older than her, like 15, 20 years older. Mm-hmm. She, you know, highly educated uh, in a legal profession. And he's now slipped into Alzheimer's. He's completely under the guise of it. Okay. And she is 100% his caretaker. She loves him she's compassionately in love with this man. She will never divorce him full stop, but she's still a vivacious woman. She still has needs. And so going to a regular dating site just won't work for her. And what she has found through Ashley Madison is a way to bring joy back to her life Mm. and bring a purpose back to life and bring herself back to life. And so, yes, she can still maintain that caretaker role for her husband because she's no longer a wife to him. That Mm. doesn't, that role stopped existing years ago. But she doesn't want to walk away from him. And we we get feedback all the time from people saying, oh, she should divorce him. That's horrible that she's doing that to him. Wait a minute. Why would – that's not good for him. That would leave him completely alone. And here's do people actually say that to you? Yeah, no, they do. Okay. If you, you I don't see, know if you're just creating. You know, a per- I can send you the links <laughs> to the articles so, where she's told her story, and you, re- I read the read comments, the comments yeah. and it's amazing that people still chastise her. And it's like you really aren't thinking this through. I just think, like, go on Tinder. If he saw you there, he won't remember you're the wife. What's the problem? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, at her age, Tinder's probably not exactly the best place. So, so Ashley yeah. Madison was, was really worked out really well for her. Oh, cool. And, uh, and so with the, the cheating coaches, uh, that's something that's 
not out pu- full It's on in yet. beta it's, right now. So we're, we're testing, testing it. it in about like 2% of the population in Brazil, mm-hmm. Canada, and the US. And we're getting some really interesting uh, feedback from them. The guys who have been using the product have seen a significant increase in terms of the responses well, yeah, getting from other women. Um, Paul, thanks for chatting with me. Uh, where can people, I don't know if you want to say where they find you, but where, <laughs> where would you like to redirect them to? Um, social media wise, obviously AshleyMadison.com. So we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, mm. we're on Twitter. You can find us all there for information and you can reach out to us on any of those platforms. We're always looking for feedback and, and questions and mm. opportunities. And if you're just interested, log on. It's free to join. You can check out how it all works. And then if you want to, you know, give it a shot. You know, buy some Is credits. Is it still a chat bot when you first sign up to Absolutely get you not. used to it? No chat Just bots. Just a practice? No? No fembots. <laughs> okay, no more fembots. Oh, and uh, and if somebody wanted to like be one of those like cheating coaches, where is it one to send an application? <laughs> uh, come to rubylife.com and that's our corporate site and you'll see our HR portfolio there. I'll have to go check that out. All right, Paul, thanks for chatting with me, man. Pleasure, Billy. Well, what what do you think now? Has your opinion on infidelity changed at all? Mine has not. Uh, you know, I'm still I still stand where I stood before I met up with Paul. Uh, although I did learn a whole lot more about you know online dating sites and Ashley Madison as a company, I do I do I am satisfied by the answers he gave to the questions about the hack. I will say that much. So, you know, if I did want to be a dishonest person, I am trusting Ashley Madison now to do it. I would just be like, oh, no, let's just negotiate an ethical, open relationship. But hey, you do you, boo boo. What did you think? I want to know. Let me know your comments on this week's episode uh, on social media. Uh, I am on Twitter at the Billy Presida. You can comment on this episode on my Instagram at Billy is Presida. Uh, or you can comment on the Man Whore Podcast Facebook page. We'll have an episode comment thread over there. Uh, but if you want to send me your comments, your questions, your titty pictures more privately, you can shoot me an email at manwhorepod at gmail.com. Have you gotten yourself some Man Whore merch? Did you know we have merch? Maybe you didn't. Maybe this is the first time you actually have listened to the outro of a Man Whore Podcast episode. Well, we got merch, people. I got t-shirts, I got panties, I got buttons, I got stickers. Head on over to gumroad.com slash podcast. Browse around, see what you want to get. Get a couple stickers, put them on your nipples. See what makes you feel good. Uh, The link for that is in the show notes. Last but certainly not least, we'd love to see you join us in the champagne room, our sex positive discussion group, by becoming a member of our fan whore community on Patreon. Patreon is the best way to show your support and show how much you value the work that I'm doing here with the Man Whore Podcast and a great way to connect with like-minded listeners of the show. Become a member today for as little as $2. For $2, you get to make me happy. You get to connect with other fans of the show. You get to feel good about yourself because you hashtag pay for your content. I don't know why you haven't done it already. Head on over to patreon.com slash podcast. That's patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash podcast. Next week, we're bringing back one of my exes, one of my ex... I don't want to say lovers because there was definitely more hate than love. Playful hate, but certainly no love. Jessica Lovelace Chandler, she is back. You last heard her on last year's Live from L.A. show. And uh, we had a really, really lovely conversation. She also asked to see my penis. Okay, till next week, everybody. Go Jets and stay slutty. I joined Billy's Patreon because he was making some really awesome content inspiring me to have some crazy adventures of my own in my life. And he deserves to get paid for that work. I also really wanted to see what all of the hype was about in the champagne room. And to be honest, it's the only reason I cited to Facebook nowadays.